We make things. We use our hands, minds, and machines to build, to fix, to improve. We're known as do-it-yourselfers, home improvement fans, fix-it fanatics, inventors. At our core, though, we're all makers. So let's jump in and make something. Hi, I'm Ron Hazelton. In addition to providing protective parking for our vehicles, garages often provide space for storage, hobbies, or workshops. But they can also offer would-be thieves and burglars easy access to our homes. Today, I'll show you some simple and effective ways to keep your garage safe from break-ins. Both summer and winter weather take their toll on wood decks. However, even the most weather-beaten structures can usually be brought back to life if you follow a few simple steps. Later in the show, I'll show you exactly what to do. Garage door openers are a real convenience, especially when the weather is unpleasant. But those same openers can offer burglars an easy way to break into your garage. Overhead door openers have a quick release mechanism that allows the door to be operated manually in a power outage. Using a technique called fishing, would-be burglars can insert a hooked piece of wire above the door, snag the release cord, disengage the opener, and roll up the door. One way to foil a fishing attempt is to install a shield in front of the release cord. This one, made from a piece of quarter-inch plywood, is quite effective. If you're planning to be away from home for several days, another way to secure the garage door is to lock it. Securing your garage not only protects the contents inside, it also helps defend your home. Once a burglar is inside the garage, he can easily break through an interior entry door while remaining safely out of sight. When it comes to garage security, the roll-up door may not be the only vulnerable spot for potential break-ins. Glass-paned garage entry doors can be made more secure with grills or even a piece of plywood. It's also important to prevent would-be thieves from getting a good look at what's inside your garage. A frosted window film will allow light to pass through, but deny visibility to prying eyes. Any door leading into your garage from the outside should be fitted with a deadbolt lock, and connecting doors between the garage and house should be kept locked from the inside. Another effective deterrent is the addition of motion-activated exterior lighting. New garage door openers, like this one from Chamberlain, incorporate some interesting security features. For example, in case you forgot to close the door, this model can be programmed to shut automatically after a preset number of minutes. Also available is a monitor that lets you know when the door has been left open and allows you to close it from practically any place inside your home. Also from Chamberlain is this optional internet gateway feature that allows you to check whether your garage door is open or closed from virtually anywhere. What's more, it also gives you the ability to open or close the door remotely. This may be a good time to give your garage a security checkup. And remember, keeping your garage secure can go a long way toward preventing break-ins in your home. Kenneth and Andretta Allen of New Orleans, Louisiana have asked for a little help, so I'm going to pay him a house call. Hi, yay, yay, yay. I don't know. This may be beyond, be beyond uh, help here. At first glance, it doesn't look good. The deck boards are splintered and have faded to a dingy shade of gray. Kenneth shows me a few other problems. Some of the boards have actually twisted out of place and nail heads are popping up all over. I can't tell you how many times I've piled these things down. They have a way of coming, creeping back up, though. 
Things look pretty bad, all right. But nonetheless, I'm fairly confident a revival is possible. Several of the problems that you see on this deck, the popping nails, the cracks on the surfaces of the board, the twisting lumber, are caused by the wood getting wet, soaking up water, expanding, and then drying out and contracting. That continual movement, expansion and contraction, causes almost all of these problems. And the way to prevent it is to make sure that you put a good sealer on your deck every year or two. But our first step is to fix those twisted planks. And we begin by removing the old nails. I drive the prongs of a nail puller beneath the heads, and then Andretta pries them out with the other end. Next, we'll try to straighten out those boards. Now this is my high-tech deck board straightening tool right here. What I've done is taken a two by four, cut a notch out of it, mm -hmm. and this is how it's gonna work, I hope. This slips right over the end of the twisted two by four like this. Oh, that's a great idea. Andretta would have never thought of that. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I bet you might have. No, I wouldn't have. Wanna it. give it a push? See if it works? Yes. That should straighten that board right up. Oh, that's great. Kenneth reattaches the problem plank with five inch screws, which create a stronger grip than nails. The real advantage to fixing this board rather than replacing it is that we won't wind up with a strip of new lumber that doesn't match the rest of the deck. Okay. There we go, I can huh? Feel, yes. Oh, what about that? Great Perfect. idea. Perfect. I Such a wait. simple solution to, to what was a big problem for you know, us. We would have went to the store and bought all kinds of contraptions and it probably wouldn't have worked as easy as this. With the twisted board straightened out, we turn our attention to those popping nails. The ones we can grip with a nail puller, we remove replacing them with nails that are thicker and slightly longer for better holding power. For the nails that are nearly flush with the surface, we use a drift punch to countersink them slightly. A few of these old boards, though, just won't lie flat and require a bit of encouragement from Kenneth. This is called trust. <laughs> Do you trust me? Or potential lawsuit. <laughs> uh -oh. With all the nails driven in, we're ready to clean the deck with a deck wash and brightener made just for the purpose. We pour the solution into a garden sprayer and I wet the deck thoroughly. Kenneth and Andretta follow behind, lightly scrubbing. But it's the chemicals that are really doing most of the work, loosening the accumulated dirt and bleaching out stains and discolorations. After about 15 minutes, we begin rinsing off the cleaning and bleaching solution using a pressure washer that connects to a garden hose and boosts household water pressure by about 15 times. The high pressure water produces a scrubbing effect as it rinses off the chemicals. To see just how well the deck is responding, we stop midway and make a comparison. Now see, here's your old board right yes. here. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's the new board mm -hmm. with the deck wash and the power sprayer. Yes. And you can see none of this is hard work. No, it isn't. Well, enough admiring our progress. We refill the garden sprayer and go back to work. After the cleaning is complete and the surface dry, it's becoming clear the deck that was once presumed ready for the kindling pile is well on its way to a comeback. It's clean. It's beautiful. It's bright. Yes. It's ready for a little sealer. Okay. It looks really, really great. Did you, did you, would you believe this was underneath no. all that? Our next step is to refill the garden sprayer, this time with a deck sealer that will help restore the wood's color and protect it from weathering. All right, guys, now what we want to try to do here is keep this maybe about a foot or so away from the deck and move it back and forth in a nice, even motion like that. Keeping the sprayer head a consistent distance from the surface will ensure a uniform coating. This sealer goes on milky, but it dries clear. The main purpose of a sealer is to slow down the rate at which the wood absorbs water and greatly reduce the expansion and contraction that caused most of this cracking and nail popping. Couldn't be easier, huh? Oh, it's going on great. Now, this product, given your conditions here, will probably seal your deck for one to two years. It's just amazing how quickly you can apply sealer with a garden sprayer. Before we know it, we're finished. Didn't even take us 20 minutes in this whole deck. No. <laughs> we have no excuse now not to maintain it. Did you say that? Yes, I did. 
<laughs> it's always so much better when it comes from you. <laughs> me. The deck sealer needs to dry for several hours before getting any foot traffic, and overnight before we can replace the furniture. But that doesn't keep us from admiring our success from a distance. I gotta tell you, I feel like we've gone back in time. I mean, this deck probably looks yeah. like it did pretty much the day it was put down. I've never yes. seen it look like this. Yeah. It was here when you bought the house, right? It was yeah, here when pretty, we bought the house. It never looked mm -hmm. this good. Yeah. And it was pretty easy, too. Yes. Yeah, it was a little work, but it was a lot easier than I would have ever thought it would have been. Good. Mm -hmm. Glad to hear that. It looks great. Because this isn't the real reason Andretta had me come here. <laughs> this was your trial project. And now that you found it so easy, the real job is this fence that runs all the way around the property here. All the way around. Cool. Cool, huh? Can you do it with Dad now? Yeah. yeah. Now, I honestly, when you first saw this deck, did you think it could turn out this well? You know, there's a lot of satisfaction in restoring things. Oftentimes, you find renewed beauty just beneath the surface. How appropriate to rediscover that here in New Orleans, where people know the value of restoring the past. Well, I'm headed just up the road to Guilford, Connecticut. I'm gonna visit Chris and Gina Tracy. Now, they have a very drafty back door. So I'm going to see if I can come up with a solution for them. Well, this is the ugly door. Well, the door may be ugly, but the setting out here is gorgeous. Oh, the All these trees is and everything. Nice uh, scallop design here. You don't care for that, huh? Uh -huh. No. Yeah, watch this. Ready? Yeah. Whoa, that'll shatter the tranquility, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah. Right. So let's take a look from the inside, because I know okay. one of the things you wanted to change was the effect of looking outside when you're in here. Right. Well, tell me what you were thinking. Well, the, the kitchen's fairly small, and it's a beautiful view out there, but you don't see half of it. So if we can get a nice full view window, you'll be able to enjoy the outside through the seasons. Okay. So there are, there are times of the year when you leave this door open, that one's closed, either with a screen or with, a, with glass in it. That's right. You want to have it unobstructed. We'd enjoy it. I okay. say let's go to work. I'm, right. I'm going to go to work. Okay, Thank see, you. See you all. I can't okay. wait to see my beautiful You'll be door. proud of us. I'll be Good. Proud. The first step for Chris and me is to unscrew and remove the old door. Then we measure the height yeah, there you go. That's good. and okay. width of the door opening. What you got? I'm looking at 31 and 7 eighths. Pretty close to 32. Yep. So uh, if the measurements are 30, 32, 34, 36, and 80 to 81 inches in height, those are all standard measurements. It means we can get a standard door. So Chris and I head off to the local home improvement center. Around these parts, fall is just beginning to make its appearance. A new door is arriving on the scene just in time. I just want to put these towels over these sawhorses because that keeps from scratching the oh, okay. surface up there. This is such a pretty door. Yeah. Durable, but you know, why take any chances? Absolutely. Okay. Hey, see these yellow tabs yes, right sir. here? These are just shipping tabs, so okay. just pull these out. It should right. pop off. We remove the screen and glass to make the door lighter and easier to work with. I've taken all the screws and all the parts for the door huh. and put them in a muffin tin like this, separated them out. Yeah. Uh, this is a great way for me to keep everything straight and not lose something. Our so first assembly step is to mount the hinge frame to the side of the door using sheet metal screws. Now, you notice down here, this hinge piece is longer than the door. Yep. We're going to have to trim this back. So let's go over here. First, we measure the height of the door opening. Go flip this over, transfer that measurement to the hinge, then cut the hinge to length. This is the Finally, we slip the door bottom into place. We'll adjust it to fit later. Let's set this in. All right. And then bring it to my side okay. as far as you can. So hold it right there, OK? Yep. I'm going to put one screw in right up there at the top. Okay. This is called the top mounting frame. Yep. It's actually the top of three frame sections. Just slip that right in there. Okay. Once the top frame is in position, we attach it with screws. Then slip the side frame into place and secure it as well. Now let's do a test open. All right, ready? Mm-hmm. Ta-da! It clears. Look at that. Clears on that side, right? Yeah, looks terrific. 
Next, we turn our attention to yep. the door bottom. Now what we're going to do is we're going to push this down so that it's in contact mm -hmm. with the threshold. Then, from the inside, we drive in a screw to lock the bottom in place. Next, it's the door closer. Pin back in. Okay. Okay, that should work. Then the latch set. And, mm -hmm. and finally, a quiz. Okay, a little baseball quiz here, right? Uh-uh. So the batter stands at home plate. And if you have if you don't have a ball, you have a strike. And this so is the this is the strike, strike plate. plate. I gotcha. See now you know where the origin of this comes from. I never knew it was a baseball origin. That's a lot of things like that in home improvement. That's incredible. But the trick it's a, is it's a guy thing. What's gonna happen is we're gonna mount this up here. And then you see over here the, the yep. latch yep. and the oh. deadbolt yep. have to fit right into these holes. Right. So the trick is to get this in exactly the right place mm. so they'll line up yep. both with the latch and the deadbolt. Yep. Well, some people call it uh, plumber's putty. I call it adult Play-Doh. All right, so I'm just going to pack a little bit of this in here that and is. close the door. And I'm going to put the deadbolt out, press it out a little bit. Put that a little bit. Yeah. And then we're going to open this up. Now you see what I've got right here? I've got an impression where the deadbolt went, and right there, the edge of the of the uh, latch. Oh, I have the latch here. Going. There you go. So now we just take this and place it right on top of the impressions. And now it's perfect. And we're it. exactly in the right spot. Terrific. Now that we know the strike plate is perfectly positioned, we screw it in place. All right, well, we're almost there. Yeah. This is the glass panel. The door also comes with a screen. Now these are held in place with this keeper. Nice. It just slips right in here. You kind of snap it into place like this. You did a pretty good job here, bud. Yeah, huh? Isn't so. that nice? Looks great. Yeah. Sounds great. Hey! Wow! Come on out! There you go. Woo -hoo -hoo. What do you think? Nice, huh? Very nice. And uh, when the weather changes, you can pull the glass out, put the screen in. That so, is beautiful. Yeah. Why don't you guys step inside, see how the view looks right. from Ooh, look there. Look at this. Great. Okay. Looks great. That's what we wanted. It's so quiet. Nice. You know, driving a large screw like this into hardwood like this oak can be kind of tough going. But here are a couple of tips that will make it easier. First of all, be sure you choose the right driver tip for your drill. Did you know that there are three different size Phillip bits? A number one for very small screws like this, a number two for medium sized screws, and a number three for large screws like the one we're about to drive in. You can always tell the number three bit because it's got sort of a blunt end right here. Secondly, try lubricating the screws either with soap or wax. In this case, the threads run the full length of the screw, so we're going to wax them all the way from one end down to the other. Now that we've got the right bit for the right screw, we got our threads lubricated, this should be fairly easy going. To view today's projects again, visit ronhazelton.com, where you'll find hundreds of how-to videos available 24-7 free home improvement videos online 24 hours a day, seven days a week.